Anthony Servino here with the Face Off Sports Network with my top waiver wire targets for week eight. Let's get right into it. Juwan Jennings, we know the deal. Brandon Ayuk dealing with knee. He's done long term. We also know Debo Samuel apparently dealing with a case of pneumonia. We don't know when he's going to return. Now, Juwan Jennings, he is dealing with the hip injury and did not play last week. However, the expectation is that he is good to go for week eight, barring any setbacks. That's per Kyle Shanahan following Sunday's loss to Kansas City. If when Jennings plays, he's going to be a locked and loaded fantasy asset. It begins Hopefully this week against my Dallas Cowboys, we know this Cowboys defense has a lot of holes. And despite the fact that the 49ers offense isn't clicking up to expectations because of all the injuries, this is a really good spot for Brock Purdy, Juwan Jennings, and even Ricky Pearsall, who should be also added on waivers if he's available, depending on the depth of your fantasy football league. But let's stick to Jennings. Jennings is more than just a one-hit wonder. Of course, he has that big monster 46.5-point outing back in week three against the Rams. Goes for 11 of 12 targets for 175 yards and three scores. He did follow that up with a decent outing in week four against New England. He finished with 11.8 PPR points. Catches three of six targets for 88 yards. So there is back-to-back -back games of production that we can hold on to here. And, and, you know, why the regression? Well, when Debo and Kittle and company, the Ayuk are all healthy, Juwan Jennings is, is the third wheel in this wide receiver room. Now he's going to be starting in two wide sets for the immediate future. And he could be a, a big-time fantasy football asset. He is somebody you want to go fairly in on with Fab and with your highest waiver wire priority claim. Let's go to another wide receiver. I don't have a graphic. The reason why Jalen McMillan became a monster priority. I would put Jennings and McMillan number one and two, maybe 1A and 1B. Because now Jalen McMillian, he steps into a monster role with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, why is that? Well, Mike Evans, if you watched the game, he exited early with what looks like a pretty serious hamstring injury. We also know that Chris Godwin suffers an unfortunate injury that's going to sideline him indefinitely for the rest of of this season, the expectations he's back for 2025. Who knows if he's even on the Buccaneers with an expiring contract. But McMillan, this is a really good spot. McMillan came in with a lot of hype. He's even flashed at times this year. Uh, back in week one, he catches the only target for a 32-yard touchdown. Not really involved because when you have – Godwin and Mike Evans and in uh, and, uh, and, and, and a loaded running back room, there's not always targets to go around, but we saw last night when the opportunity presented itself. McMillan, eight targets. He even carried the ball one time for 11 yards. He only caught three of 15, but this game was a blowout. Let's call it what it is. Now he's going to be working with Baker Mayfield in two wide sets, I do think we also see a bump from Trey Palmer, who just like I said about Pearsall and Jennings, I, I think Trey Palmer, depending on the depth of your league, is also in play here. But the guy I want in Tampa Bay is Jalen McMillan. Great matchup upcoming in week eight against the Atlanta Falcons. Let's go to a running back I like, Jalen Warren. What's the deal with Jalen Warren? Because he started the year, didn't look like the same player, dealing with a lower body injury. Then he misses weeks four and five with the aforementioned injury. But week seven against the Jets, right? Sunday night football, Jalen Warren began to look like his old self. Now, didn't deliver in fantasy, 
but he played 33 snaps. Why is that significant? Because it, it's a season high, and it also matched Najee Harris's 33 snaps. Warren also got a season high 14 touches. He only took it for 59 scoreless yards, but he's starting to look like his old self. They're starting to use him again. Uh, and, and Warren, for what it's worth, when he is involved, 72.4% of his yards are after contact, which is 87th percentile at the running back position. Uh, he's also being targeted on 23.9% of his routes that he is running with a 90.9% .9 catch rate. When this guy gets healthy, we know Arthur Smith is going to emphasize the running backs. I also believe this offense is going to operate more efficiently with Russell Wilson. You got to pick up Warren. I don't know if he's a startable standalone player yet in the flex along with Najee because, you know, Najee now back-to-back -back games over 100 yards. He's starting to play well. But we know there's injury contingency upside with Jalen Warren. Let's go to a, a, a slew of players now. Browns wide receivers. Mari Cooper, we know. He's no longer there. That opens up Jerry Judy, who, depending on where you play, he's still available in around 40% of leagues. Uh, Cedric Tillman, Elijah Moore, all of these wide receivers should be looked at, should be added. Why? Well, Deshaun Watson, done for the year. In comes, we believe, Jameis Winston, who we'll get to in a minute. But when it comes to these ancillary weapons, uh, you know, we saw Jerry Judy lead the way with 74 offensive snaps at the wide receiver position in week seven, followed by Moore at 49, or followed by Tillman with 64, Elijah Moore with 49. So if we're following that, Jerry Judy should be the guy that you want the most. But he only had five targets, hauling in one for 18. But again, that's a little skewed because this offense didn't really begin to pick up, shocker, until the quarterback change. When it comes to Cedric Tillman, he looked like a stud. Third round pick, had a lot of hype coming in, didn't have a lot of opportunity in his early career. But this week, 8 of 12 targets for 81 yards. We also have Elijah Moore. Elijah Moore... He also had a little bit of action, catches six of seven targets for 41 yards. I'm very optimistic about this Browns offense. You got Nick Chuck back. I, I think we're going to have a competent quarterback play now. And this offense, we know it was clicking last year when Deshaun was out. And outside of Cooper, you're getting a little bit younger at wide receiver. I'm buying into this Browns offense moving forward, especially that they can take the pressure off Jameis a little bit with Nick Chubb. Speaking of Jameis Winston, if you need quarterback help, Jameis Winston's available everywhere. He's going to be free. I especially like him in super flex leagues. He was the emergency quarterback this week. I don't know why I didn't make that decision. I don't quite understand that decision-making, but consequently, he ultimately gets on the field and only 12 offensive snaps, 5 for 11, uh, 67 yards, and a touchdown. Uh, he, he threw one pass over 20 yards, so he had one big play. He had five red zone passes. Uh, so this offense is going to move with Jameis Winston. I like the weapons around him. And we know quarterback this year. It's been a little bit wonky. I might want to stash Jameis Winston. What if you're a Mahomes owner? As crazy as it sounds, Jameis Winston might give you some more pop games. Maybe you know, you were relying on Daniel Jones, who I was high on. Then the Andrew Thomas injury happened, and we, we saw it this past week against Philly. When Andrew Thomas is out of that Giants offense, Andrew uh, Daniel Jones, when he's not getting that protection, he turns back into a pumpkin after giving us some quality quarterback play. So Jameis Winston should be on your radar. Let's move to our next player we are adding, Kendra Miller. Kendra Miller, whether or not Dennis Allen likes him, whether or not he's in Dennis Allen's doghouse, Kendra Miller is the next man up. 
should anything happen to Alvin Kamara or the aging Jamal Williams? In very limited action, 20 offensive snaps, his first action this year, six for 36, an efficient rushing yards per carry from Kendra Miller. Uh, he did get three targets. He only caught two for one yard, but that game was a disaster. It was a really hard matchup against Denver. Nothing went right. There was a lot of injuries, obviously. Shahid done for the year. Alave out. The Saints team is a mess. And why is that significant? Because Alvin Kamara is not getting any younger. The Saints team isn't going anywhere. His contract is movable. There's a chance that the phone is picked up and somebody trades for Alvin Kamara. And what does that mean? Kendra Miller could be the RB1 rest of season in that case. Uh, of course, there's the injury contingency. If anything happened to Kamara, obviously Kendra steps in. But in the event of a trade, which I do think is within the range of outcomes, you want to get ahead of the market. I talk about this a lot on waivers and on the live shows. Get ahead of the market. Maybe Kendra doesn't have the immediate value, right? You get the Chargers this week. That means he's just a really cheap, right? Because after the Chargers, you get the Panthers in week nine. And we know multiple running backs can get you double-digit PPR points from the same team against that matchup. Like, Kendra's going to be more expensive next week than he is going to be now. And plus, what if injury? A lot of guys are getting hurt in the Saints. What if trade? Get ahead of the market. Pick up Kendra Miller right now. Kamani Vidal, this is another guy. Uh, not very active last night. It was a weird game by the Chargers. Dobbins couldn't get going. Uh, we only saw Vidal uh, four touches, 19 yards, hardly involved, 17 offensive snaps. Hassan, it's not like Haskins was getting run. He only had three offensive snaps. It was just the J.K. Dobbins show, and that's what I expect it to be. But again, we have to think ahead. Dobbins is injury prone, and we don't wish injury, but we need to at least put that in the back of our heads. Well, who's the next man up with Gus on IR? It's Kamani Vidal. We're not going to spend a lot of time on this. Uh, next one is a big one, Hunter Henry with Drake May. Hunter Henry is emerging into an every week starter at tight end, another weird position this year. Back-to-back -back games, over 13 PPR points, pops last week. Eight of nine targets for 92 yards, 17.2, which is his second highest total of the year. Both of these games with Drake May. Drake May has now targeted Hunter Henry 14 times in two games. There is a rapport here, and, and we know the narrative. Well, the, the, the rookie quarterback likes to target the tight end and lean on him. That's a real thing. We are seeing it right now in New England, especially in a wide receiver room. There's not a lot of reliability they're still trying to find guys to step up especially with pop douglas dealing with that injury if you need a tight end a lot of us do hunter henry i don't love the next two games against the jets and titans they even got the bears like this is a tough run of matchups but again there's not a lot of options and drake may he, he kind of did a really good job against the houston texans so i don't think he's he, you know i don't think he's smart enough not saying he's dumb but like at, at this juncture your your third and fourth nfl career start like i i don't think he's worrying about matchup i think he's just worrying about completing passes to the open guy and hunter henry has been mr reliable so far for drake may speaking of drake may he's a priority and at the quarterback position back-to-back -back games to start his NFL career. This guy is doing well. Drake May, over 23.6 fantasy points in back-to-back -back games. He has thrown for over 243 yards in back-to-back -back games with at least two touchdowns. What's impressive is that he went from three total turnovers in week six against Houston to zero, and again, it was Jacksonville. Jacksonville's a slouch team, but this is still an inexperienced rookie. No turnovers, no fumbles, no picks, uh, you know, 70.3% completion percentage. Uh, he has completed, uh, or yards per attempt, 7.4 and 7.5. He's given us some rushing floor. I don't want to say he's a, you know, uh, an every week starter, 
in, in one quarterback. I, I think depending on bye weeks and injuries, there's a couple of times this year where you may be able to stream him. But in Superflex, I absolutely positively want to be rostering Drake May if he's out there or you trade for him. Let's go to another running back, Tyler Goodson. Now, Goodson, it looks like the better back between he and Trey Sermon. When it comes to snaps, last week it was a lot closer, 32 to 29, only three snap differential with Sermon slightly leading it away. Now, Goodson, the past two games, 10 and a half and 11.1, not a big ceiling, but he is beginning to compile red zone touches, five red zone touches for Goodson in the past or rushes in the past two games, uh, including three last week against Miami. He also scores the touchdown, no targets, which is concerning. They seem to be going in the direction of Trey Sermon still. But again, like this offense is going to be weird with Anthony Richardson in it anyway. I don't love these matchups with Houston and Minnesota. The only reason why we are picking up Goodson is if, Jonathan Taylor cannot return. There is a little bit of hope Jonathan Taylor plays this week, but if he does not, I, I mean, I, again, I don't love the matchups for Goodson, but you could do a lot worse if you're in a bind at running back. Let's start winding this down. Trey Tucker, this is another guy. If you, you're, you know, you're in a deep league, if you have the bench space or if you're strict or struck in or, or stricken by injuries, whatever that word is. Trey Tucker is going to give you action here and there. Now, in weeks three and four, 22 PPR points, 15 PPR points. Since then, he's been on a downhill run. With no Jacoby Myers last week, Devontae Adams out of town. Trey Tucker did see eight targets, his most since week three. I, I think the offense is going to be a little bit better with Gardner Minshew, although I was down on both of those quarterbacks. I, I think they did trade for Desmond Ritter. I don't know how much of a help that's going to be, but Trey Tucker is a pure floor play if he's getting targets. I don't expect a lot from Tucker or the Raiders. I, I would rather have Jacoby Myers and Brock Bowers. But if you're in a bind, Trey Tucker, yeah, you could do a lot worse. Uh, let's close this out with Mike Williams. The reason why I'm telling you to buy into Mike Williams isn't because his role on the Jets, which is diminished. The reason why I'm telling you to buy into Mike Williams is because there's a really good chance he's going to be traded to a wide receiver needy team. So again, get ahead of the market. If Mike Williams is available, pick him up on waivers, or I would go trade for him while he's cheap. Teams like Kansas City need a receiver. Pittsburgh, they can use a number two wide receiver as well. There are teams out there who can use the services of Mike Williams. So if you have the, the bench spot, go get him now. Uh, what if the 49ers trade for Mike Williams, right? Like, what if the Browns, like, th there's a lot, Tampa Bay. Think about those passing offenses. Think about the talent of Mike Williams and think about the fact that you can have him for free. I'm Anthony Servino, Face Off Sports Network. We'll see.